Hi, very good afternoon. It's Shane from Avstar. Got some really good stuff to show you in this video, and it is science and magnetic pole related, so you know, stay with me. First things first, um, I wanted to just bring your attention to this. Look at this. Seven years now we've had the magnetometer running, uh, tracking the magnetic north pole, you know, our Trimax system. Seven years. It hasn't gone without any glitches. We've had to replace a few tracks and magnetometers and uh, NFR24 transceivers um, over the time. And, uh, you know, uh, we have recently calibrated the tracks when we put them back in, you know, after service. So there is maintenance going on. But the thing is, you know, we're due at some point to pay our uh, five yearly fee on the website. And each time it goes up because the amount of data that we put on there. And, you know, obviously we've seven years um, historical record of TriMag data, as well as, you know, a couple of years now, a good few years of doing the Earth Alpha at a glance where we record CO2 levels and all the other volcano and earthquake in, within 24 hours and the muon detectors and all the other stuff. You know, we are, you know, squashing up a load of um, data onto this website and therefore we're charged more for it at the um, end term period. The thing is, I'm going to struggle uh, to do this on my own, guys, and you know, I'm just genuinely asking for a little bit of financial help so that we can keep the data uh, in its current format on the website and the historical data. More importantly, because if you guys lose that, you know, you've lost. The, you know, all you'll be ending up with, if we're lucky, is just the latest when it's recorded, and that'll be on a YouTube or a Rumble video or something like that. And that's no good to anyone because the idea of collecting data is so that we've got a historical record. We can check what's going on. So those seven years that we've been collecting the TriMac data is very important and we can't afford to lose it because that will be just throwing seven years research into the bin. So, you know, there is a link down there in the description. Please consider supporting what we do. This is really unique and I can't emphasize that to anyone you know more than I do we've got the only observatory tracking live every three seconds the magnetic north pole position and in this video um, you're going to see why there's a bit more curiosity now surrounding the movement of the magnetic north pole and we are slowly grabbing traction uh, with other scientific organizations and keeping very much this topic of uh, science alive you know you can people can knock me for everything but they can't knock me for my persistency in the 10 years that we've been talking about this and the seven years that we've been collecting data and all the other years on other anomalies that we've collected and put it all in one space for you on our website pole shift news so you know help support us and keep this going you know what even be defiant in the crisis time that we're all in at the moment you know, it's not just us in the air in the UK and you, you guys over there in America and Canada and Australia. And today, watching a documentary on the amount of people that are leaving New Zealand because the cost of living is just so expensive. And, you know, all you guys as well in Europe, you know, we've only got one Mavstar Observatory. That would be like seeing a species go extinct if we lost it. Now, there's nearly 60,000 of you guys out there I'm sure we can do better than just p amount of people each week, you know, that you can count on one hand, and I'm not joking. We need to do a lot more, because this is our observatory. No government hands or corporation have got the dirty little mitts on it. This belongs to us. So, you know, with that, let's move on to really getting down to some nitty gritty in the geomagnetic region. Now, uh, with credit to Stefan Burns, uh, I wanted to talk about a subject that he brought up in one of his recent videos about the Gargal Caltera supervolcano. Uh, and even though um, his suggestions of the magnetic north pole not arriving at the site yet um, is, you know, up for debate. You know, we could we could go there all day long, but you know, I, I like the fact that somebody else is talking about geomagnetics and um, also um, you know uh, earthly raid anomalies such as the uh, north mid-atlantic ridge where the uh, gargal katara uh, supervolcano sits um, so 
my point is this i'm going to switch over to google earth and we'll see um, uh, where our trimag system puts the gargal um, super volcano in relationship to where the magnetic north pole is um, positioned uh, according to our data from the trimag system so let's go and have a look at that but before we do you know it's really nice to see somebody else talking about this so kudos to you stefan burns for bringing it up i know it's not your normal line of field and I, I am intrigued in the correlation between geomagnetic storms uh, that are affected by CMEs and other solar activity uh, in relationship to whether or not it could set off Gargal or Katira supervolcano. Um, my view on that is just simply I don't think so. Uh, as much as I don't believe, uh, you know, chronomass ejections. Uh, uh, CMEs and you know other solar storm activity affects earthquakes in any way or form. Um, if you look at earthquakes, earthquakes are caused by co convergent, divergent, and subduction zones. So plate tectonics is really the thing that drives, um, you know, earthquakes. I don't think you need to add in, uh, you know, solar storms or uh, geomagnetic events and. I, I think the link between um, the magnetic north pole and super volcanoes erupting is a very, very unproven theory. Even though it's not ro uh, wrong to suggest that that could happen, I just would like to see a lot of evidence to support it. And we just clearly just don't have it. So, you know, I think for the moment, if we just stick to, you know, the principal model, which is what's driving the magnetic field, which is the magneto inside our core of our earth um, which sets up the dipoles the north and south poles and then in turn um, you know produces our protective shield the magnetosphere if we stick with that basic model which is you know got a lot of support over many many years decades in fact then you know i don't think we'll be too far off with you know our attempts to investigate a little bit more and build on the research 10 years i've been in this field now and by any means it's not a long time uh, compared to some of the researchers now i've got a couple of projects just before we go over to google earths and start looking at gold gold katera uh, super volcano i am going to uh, be borrowing a, a miniature lathe off someone at some point and uh, i'll show you when i finished it what i'm basically going to do is build three axis gyro compass and i'm also building a dipper compass as well because i want to show you the difference between these basically the dipper and the standard handout compass that you might have at home the only difference is one is a vertical and one is a horizontal so one will give you a reading of the, the vertical position of the magnetic north pole and the other one will give you a reading of the horizontal so I was going to build an analog version of that and also try and get a three axis compass working an analog three axis compass i just think it would be great to have um you know so let's move on to google earth but i just want to show you one other thing because let's iron out a misunderstanding about our earth's magnetic poles let's just clear this up very quickly before we move on okay so i don't want to confuse anyone but in general the what we call the magnetic north pole is actually a south pole and this is something i wanted to show you in a video i'll set the experiments up so i could show you and i've got one of these electronic magnetic pole detectors uh, and a handout compass but if you look at this diagram on the left you can see that there is a little compass above the north pole in the field lines and it is pointing away from the north pole and then on the south pole of the very same image, you can see in the magnetic field lines another compass and it's pointing to the south. Now, if you take your compass out, the red pointer will point to a particular pole and that particular pole will be a south pole, even though it's in the northern hemisphere. So when I talk about the magnetic north pole, I'm simplifying it for you guys. I know it's a south pole, but here's the thing. Why don't we correct it? Why don't the global uh, scientific community correct this issue and just call the what is the North Pole now the South Pole? And let's then say from this point on out, it is the South Pole 
which is migrating. And here's the other thing as well. If you reverse them and you start calling the North Pole the South Pole from that point on, you've also got to change the East and West back to front as well. So we, we say we live in the West here. You know, really, we don't. The truth is we live in the East and the magnetic North Pole is actually tracking West. I, I just wanted to clear this up. It's like, you know, there's a lot of things I can think of. And just another one quickly off the top of my head is when people say, oh, the sun's rising. It's not rising at all. It's the earth that's rotating and gives the appearance of the sun coming up into the sky. Yes, we can see our, on the horizon, the sun rising above the horizon, but it's not actually rising. The sun's fixed. It's us that goes around the sun at 70 miles an hour. 70,000 miles an hour and our earth spins at a thousand miles an hour and we will do one rotation in 24 hours and so the sun doesn't rise at all it's the earth that rotates but we say it rises it's like you know these things i think need to be sorted out they really do and and there are errors in the gregorian calendar as well which you could point out but the you know um, to stay on you know line with what we're trying to do I wanted to just clear this up for you because you know we, we talk about this all the time but we never you know if I keep mentioning the fact that the south pole is actually the north pole you know I'm going to confuse people because gonna, they're going to say well it's in the northern hemisphere and it just confuses people so for the s sake of just keeping things um, you know uh, less confusing we'll just keep calling it like we have done over the years the north pole the north magnetic pole because it's conveniently in the northern hemisphere but you know it, unless the world's uh, scientific community want to square that up and address it um then you know we'll just leave it the way it is okay let's move on to having a look at gargal cotera uh Caltera supervolcano in relationship to where the magnetic north pole is according to our data that we've collected off the trimag so here we are and we're looking at uh, Gargal Caltera supervolcano and it's that region here in the center that you can see the biggest crater on the North Atlantic Ridge. Um, I, I believe that Stefan Burns is predicting that the magnetic North Pole hasn't arrived there and could be where that blue line is. So we'll just measure how many miles that would be till it got to the center. And as you can see, it's saying that that would be 30 four miles away now even by you know noah's uh migrative speed you know that would be less than a year before it arrived there but you know as we know from using the trimax system it's already past the territory of cargo uh Katera, K Caltera supervolcano and is well on the way now to the 45 degree mark and remember it's in between these two marks we said the activity would start just want to clear up one thing that marker of 40 degrees was put there two and a half years ago. And uh, if we just measure uh, from the center of the volcano to roughly where we are now, how many miles that is, we are 51 miles away from the center of that. So we've already surpassed, you know, the uh, epicenter, if you want, of Gargal super volcano. Um, what else did I want to say that was important? Yeah, so Stephen believes that there will be an interaction between the activity of solar winds when the magnetic North Pole arrives over Cargill supervolcano and that the um, ions and the cosmic rays trapped in you know the magnetosphere or the magnetic field of the Earth as it comes down and centers on Cargill that there might be interchange. Uh, of energies let's say and that could trigger or possibly he didn't say it would but possibly you know a super volcano event but luckily it passed over there according to the data that we collect you know some time ago uh, back in 2023 as you can see from the pin marks we've already passed it but you know importantly our 40 degree mark was slap bang center of Cargill super volcano and we put that mark on there, like I said, two and a half years beforehand. So, you know, we're well past that uh, region now. And we're on our way to the 45 degree mark. And in the next uh, video I'll do on the topic of this, I will give you the predictive arrival time at 45 degree. But remember, 
according to historical you know um, um, research it is somewhere in between 40 degree and 45 degree that we should see um, a rapid movement of the magnetic north pole so we'll say this that you know if you've been watching you'll be aware that we're probably covering around on average six miles every month now and there has been you know uh, an uptake in the speed of that and the other thing is guys if you'd have got your compass out seven years ago and marked it up on a position that you could put that compass back on today and know that that position hadn't moved and that the compass was in the exact same place and took a reading you know it'd be more than 11 degrees out that's exactly what we did we calibrated uh, the position of the magnetic north pole nine years ago and we can i can see just i've got two compasses in front of me on the table and i can see that they are not pointing clearly in the same direction as what there was years ago when i was doing a lot of experiments with compasses you know this anomaly cannot never be denied with the amount of evidence that we've collected alone at this observatory to support you guys in the knowledge of this thing but yet even despite all the hard work we've done we've still not managed to reach more than two percent of the population of this earth and make them aware of the significant climate impacts that this is having on our planet this is a game changer trust me this is probably one of the most important anomalies that is taking place in humanity's history at least for the last 12,000 years that's how big it is 12,000 is a big number but if we go back to the last recorded completed reversal we're talking 780,000 years ago that is an enormous number of years and there's no recorded data as to what happens during because we've not got to that point yet we're only at the beginning so guys uh, with that i just want to mention the link down there come on get behind us you know don't let one of the rarest things on this planet disappear and along with it all the historical data that we've collected you know make an effort to at least keep one thing in this is an insane world that we're living in at the moment i know people are struggling yeah, you know, I join you on that. You know, by no means am I a rich person. You know, I'm the only one on YouTube that has the number of subscribers that I've got and don't own my own um, homestead. Just haven't got one. Just never raised enough money. Maybe I should have been selling mugs and T-shirts and hoodies years and years ago. I might have been there by now or other stuff. I had a few shops going, I don't know, anyhow it was always about the information and not about you know waxing myself rich but it is important to keep at least you know a little bit of um revenue coming in to keep paying for all the other little things that we do here so guys you have an amazing day link down there in the description please get some get some support behind us and i'll say what i usually do take it easy have a great day as always bye for now